the birth and legacy of NASA. NASA opened its doors on October 1st, 1958, but it was not the government's first flight research agency. The National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics, or NACA, was founded way back in 1915. The agency was tasked to conduct aeronautical research, including the development of wind tunnels. The NACA was a very successful agency. The program made history in 1947 when Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. But it wasn't all about breaking records. The D-558 had a radical new design that had swept wings. Thanks to NACA research, the design was proven to be more efficient and became common on commercial jet aircraft. Years before NASA was founded, the NACA was already researching rockets. It even went as far as researching re-entry vehicles. In 1957, the USSR successfully launched Sputnik 1, the first satellite to orbit Earth, forcing the U.S. government to make changes. The NACA is in process of great change. As you know, the final decisions are being made by the democratic processes of our chosen form of government that will result in the establishment of a new agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Agency, built around the present NACA with responsibilities for the non-military aspects of space activities. But now we have come to a new day. NACA is to become part of a new agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Two, one, by command, by command. command. Q-Tank pressure eyes. Lock-tank pressure eyes, missile power. Ignition, space tank. And like that, the space race was on. NASA's first decade in space. Much of the first decade was spent gathering data from satellites, telescopes, and research vessels. As research advanced, satellites carried plants, microorganisms, and animals. These biosatellites taught us how weightlessness, radiation, velocity, and pressure affected life. NASA sent probes to Mars and Venus to learn more about our neighbors. NASA's next step was to place an unmanned vessel on the moon, proving that a person could walk on its surface. In 1962, the Ranger 4 accomplished that mission. That gave a green light for astronauts to begin preparing themselves for spaceflight. They began going through intense conditioning and training exercises to be ready for one thing. Each test flight provided new and critical information. NASA began docking with spacecraft already in orbit, which led to spacewalks. And of course, the most important test, bringing astronauts back to Earth safely. Some of NASA's missions didn't go according to plan, but with every failure, there's potential to learn and grow pushing us further into the infinite darkness of space and bringing back new knowledge in preparation for one of humans' greatest achievements. To the moon. July 16th, 1969. Mission Commander Neil Armstrong prepares for the historic trek. The team rose early ate breakfast and dressed in their spacesuits. 10, 9, ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. 
Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Roger, we got a roll from Tower clear. Roger, roll. The journey to the moon lasted three days. The team kept busy navigating, observing, and grooming. On July 19th, Apollo 11 enters orbit around the moon, sending back incredible images. Good radar data. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. 1,400 feet, still looking very good. 700 feet, 21 down. 33 degrees. 100 feet down at 19. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. Four forward. Four forward, drifting to the right a little. Head. Hey. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy it down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Seven hours after landing, Armstrong finally steps out of the lunar module. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. They left behind an American flag, along with medals honoring those who lost their lives in earlier space tests. They also left messages of goodwill from 73 countries. After spending 21 hours on the moon's surface, it was time to go home. The lunar module rejoined the command module and headed back to Earth. Apollo 11 and crew came hurling back to Earth at 25,000 miles per hour. The crew was welcomed home with rescue divers and thunderous applause. The astronauts wore special airtight garments to protect against the possibility of lunar contamination. They were immediately placed into quarantine. The historic journey ended on July 27, 1969. The mission was a success, unlocking a wealth of knowledge about the moon, its history, and its composition. From all of us here at CNET, congratulations NASA on 60 years of space exploration and research. For more news on NASA's 60th birthday, visit CNET.com. Two wheels on the ground.